Hey guys and welcome back on the channel for another how to sound like today. We're gonna talk about Alignment and his latest release on Charlotte David's label Context. So I kind of remade especially the beat of one of the tracks and I want to show you how he gets this massive groove into his hard techno. Let's go. Alright guys, so you probably are familiar with this track, it's called Attack and you are also probably aware that those are not the actual sounds of the track. I'm talking about the choir sample of course, uh, which is actually sounding a lot different in the original track, but I kind of recreated it with a synthesizer and it works fine for me. We're going to talk about this in a second and um, I also couldn't find any good vocals so I kind of focused on recreating that part and especially I want to talk to you about the drums and how he gets this groove into his track right so don't mind too much about the the stuff in the beginning the break elements here I just made them so everything makes a little more sense and we get the kind of transition into the drop and I would say without further ado, we should start by looking at, well, we always start with that, but still let's look at the most important thing for techno, which is the kick drum. So for this kick drum, I've used a sample out of Reaxis sample pack. It's available on our shop, Weltsound. And um, I wanted to make it a little harder. So you see, first of all, there's uh, three, uh, two instances of distortion right we have one overdrive we have one saturator and maybe we can check out the kick drum without the effects first and then add them one by another and see what they do so this is what the kick drum sounds like when it's raw i really like the the way the sub bass is shaped that it comes a little later this is also exactly the way that alignment's kick drum is shaped in attack uh, the transient was a little too weak, so we had to kind of dial some stuff in here, right? We have some overdrive distortion in the mid area. And then we have some saturation to put everything a little more together. We have some compression. I'm using the glue compressor here because I want to use the, the soft clip, right? This gives us this distinguished tone around the the mid bass to low mid area and a lot of times you don't want that when you kind of you know process your kick drums in this specific case i really wanted that to happen so that's why we have the soft soft clipping here uh, some gain staging through the utility and then something that i came up very late is just a simple like reverb it's actually a hall so it's a big reverb on the kick drum and it's obviously cut the, the low frequencies um, away. We can even make this a little stronger, I would say. <laughs> and um, it sounds like this. And somehow I really like that. I don't know if that's the way he's doing it, but in combination with all the other sounds later, it just creates a thick and bright sounding low end. So we have some super strong sub bass in the kick, we have some punchy transient, and then we have this kind of atmosphere and kind of fullness to the sound, thanks to the reverb. And we have a rumble recorded from the kick drum through reverb and uh, the amplifier by Ableton, and also some saturation and overdrive on here, because one thing that this rumble needs is it needs a lot of like 
thickness and frequencies in the subbase area, not only one specific like um, peak in its frequencies. So we added some saturation and overdrive here, EQ'd some of the harmonics, like the higher harmonics that get added away, and eventually it sounds like this. We have a mid bass then, which is essentially like some more thumb for the kick drum, right? It sounds like this. And it doesn't really make a huge difference since it's very quiet, but I still feel like this is something that is implemented in his track in a way. Maybe he's doing that uh, via distortion in the original kick drum already, but I kind of had this recorded when I was recording the rumble and I liked it and I also wanted to show you that you can like use those kind of uh, recordings for example for rumble in different ways like this for example is if I remember correctly the rumble just pitched up a little and there you go then we have some percussions very important for hard techno um, this is uh, just some dotted eight note delay on the kick drums transient and with a long feedback, it results in something like this. Which we should cut some bass away. And this is the full low end, right? It runs through some erosion to give it a little bit more of this noisy texture, a little bit more of saturation and some good old low extender which basically means like long attack uh, compression to kind of put everything a little more together and still have some power in the transients so in the top group here we have two different claps and this is already one of the main topics that i want to talk about today um, because alignment is using the two and four clap intensely right it's really one of its main aspects of the beat and it makes you wonder because the two and four clap normally tend to make the track a little slower like for example for very groovy uh, sounds like maybe i don't know deep house or something that kind of works very well because it allows to have more focus also maybe on the melodic part but for this specific sound where it's all about like roughness and being fast uh, it actually even seems like a little counterintuitive to use the two and four clap obviously it isn't because it depends on the way you're doing this right so first of all let's have a listen to the clap right i, I just chose the simple 808 uh, I think that's actually what he's going for i did some EQing here and balanced it out a little bit more um, and also added a lot of saturation. This is very important. So let's take away the reverb and the saturation, right? This is the clap with a little bit of EQing. You know, it still sounds kind of very thin and reduced to its transient while if we're using the saturator now. This kind of works like compression, right? It puts everything up and also, this is not like compression, uh, adds a lot of like frequencies and even some noisy texture thanks to the hard curve algorithm here. And um, to conclude it, we have the hybrid reverb. Um, I chose a convolution only, big snare boom here, put the size down a little bit so we have like not even a second of reverb. And the reverb is actually quite loud. So this already feels pretty massive. Um, but what's missing now is to connect stuff with the clap to make it feel more alive and also kind of more groove in the track and essentially also lose its kind of two and four only uh, attributes, right? So first of all, and this is what we're going to talk about a lot in the video today now. So first of all, we have the clap FX here, which is essentially just another clap and it's here on the on the last eighth of um, of a bar right and um, if we look at it we have just like a kind of it's kind of a delay somehow to the original clap 
I've used a 909 here though and um, actually though the same kind of saturation and some different EQing obviously because I I didn't want it to be much up front like the, the, the 808 clap here. I gave it some higher frequencies so this is some lesson here. I gave it some higher frequencies to put it closer to the listener because the higher the frequencies of a sound are the, the more closer it will feel to the listener because if you think about it when someone is very close to you you will understand them very well which means you will hear all the high frequencies of their voice for example while if someone is far away you will only hear some like muffled version of their voice and this is what we kind of create here with dropping down the higher frequencies a little bit and also having a completely different reverb than on the clap right here we have a super short room very resonant also and here we have a plate um, which is almost like I mean uh, four times bigger than the other reverb of the of the two and four clap so what that means is we have a nice difference of dimensional positioning right so first of all we have the two and four clap which is very close very big and then we have this clap fx which is far away and almost feels like a delay of the actual clap and everything together works very well You could argue that we maybe want to have some more like notes in here or maybe vary them over time. You see that this is only a one bar loop so it repeats after every second clap basically we have this clap fx. Um, alignment didn't really vary that if I'm not mistaken and I think this really adds up to the kind of techno hypnotic raw industrial feeling that there's not too much fidelity in the in the claps but rather it's just really really in your face and um, yes it's it's astonishing to me how easy this is actually and still how good it works if you use the right reverb settings if you use the right EQing and if you get the right rhythm right so from here, we should move on just for a brief moment to the offbeat head and the right. There is not too much to say about this. I have this hi-hat that kind of sounds exactly the same as his, funnily. Not much done here. And we have a right. And the only interesting thing here is that we have a 16th note auto pen without face. Right? So we're not doing the... the actual panning but rather this is just a volume control so this is like a vibrato on the volume basically and it sounds like this very interesting I think I heard this before in like hard techno beats to make the ride feel a little faster like and more aggressive right because actually the ride is a very open and kind of long instrument sounds like this but if we add the the yeah modulation here now we get this kind of right a little shaking right and this is uh, very nice so this is it on the hi-hats already and I rather want to get back to this main groove that we already talked about here and here and now look at this there's more stuff happening I'm gonna go to the four bar loop now because what do we know we have to extend our loop. So if this is new to you, right, you're starting in a loop, maybe with your kick drum, this is a quarter of a bar loop because it will hit every quarter of a bar at the same place. Then you would kind of maybe add the two and four clap, which already splits your loop into half of a bar, right? Because it's like kick, clap, kick, clap. Then you would add this here, for example, which splits it into a bar. And now we wanna go even further. So we're gonna add different sounds now. And the first of them is very interesting. It's a breath. <laughs> so I basically took some random breath sample for gaming, I think. Splice also has a lot of uh, movie and gaming sounds. And this is a monster breathing or so, I don't know. Um, just needed some EQing and find the right uh, reverb settings here. And for sure you can check out all the reverb settings um, when you download the project, right? Don't forget about this. Today is a very, very big project with a lot of sounds and you can learn a lot from here. So don't forget to follow the link in the description, download the project and have fun with this rebuild of alignments attack. 
So anyways, this is the reverb. Then we have some OTT on here because I really wanted this reverb to be up, right? I didn't want to fade it so fast. I really wanted it to be strong and up and in our face and some EQing in the end, right? So actually this track is not too special. It's just a nice idea in general to have a breath as a sound, right? And then uh, having the breath on the one, like every bar it's on the one, it kind of opens the, the track. Every bar opens it up a little bit. So that's very interesting from a lot of perspectives. And here we have a classic call and response scheme. So we have the breath and then it gets responded by this choir sound, right? We already talked about this in the beginning. This is not the actual choir sound that he is using because he has probably used a sample for that. And I don't have that sample. And I also thought I wouldn't, I mean, why would I search for another sample here? I could also just try and make something that sounds similar. And while I used some form and stuff in the beginning, it's actually funny. I ended up with having this one acid oscillator bending it and adding the unison on here and with some of the effects to me it it's like i mean it's obviously not the choir that he's using but it's so close in qualities of sound and what does it do that it was much better than anything that i did with uh, formant filters or formant wavetables anything like that so the sound sounds like this Right, because his choir is like an E. It's not an A, ah, it's not an U or O, it's an E. And this this E quality is very much coming from, like I guess, mainly because of the, the wavetable position, so stretching the acid. And uh, yes, so here we have like call, response, call, response, call, and then a little variation of the response, right? If we look at the notes just real quick, the track is in D minor, and then we have like the, the plus one, out of the octave. We talked about this so often already on the channel that the plus one not being, I said out of the octave, right? I mean scale obviously, not being in the scale is uh, such a good note for techno because it's so tense and so kind of makes you feel a little, mm, I don't know, uh, but also very like badass and can give you this feeling of, okay, this is a very, very strong pattern here. And now I want you to keep your attention on something else that I find incredibly interesting, which is also why I put up all the, the clips like this here. If you look at those four tracks, you notice there is no overlapping of sounds. Breath, clap. Choir, clap, other clap. This is the kind of way this pattern works. There's no overlapping of sounds at all, which makes it feel very much moving from one place to another and very, very, very kind of playful. A lot of call and response action happening here. And this is very, very nice, nicely done by alignment. And here, uh, as one of the next call and response sounds, we have a bass. We can also have a quick look at that. Um, this is also the acid wave table a little more stretched down, so not that much resonance. And I added a bunch of effects here. Uh, we can have a listen. This is what it sounds like. And if we put up the effects, almost sounds identical, right? There's not too much happening except for having reverb, taking away some frequencies that are not necessary, using a little bit of overdrive just to, you know, more like squash it down a little bit. And this, this redux was kind of there to give it some Texture. I don't even know if that's necessary, to be honest. Uh, I still thought it sounds cool, and you can experiment with that when you download the project. Uh, lastly, we have this Synth FX, which could actually also be a transition, but anyways. Um, this is the sound that's by far the farthest away from the original. I wasn't sure how he did this, to be honest, but it kind of has the same qualities, this very, very high harmonic focused and uh, also kind of very detuned, distorted character. And therefore I'm very okay with that being not the closest adaption of it. <laughs> and I've used the same sound here as well um, to make a reverse synth out of it, right? It's exactly the same sound. 
or kind of. No, it looks like I actually switched up one one wavetable right here. We have a sine, and here I move to yeah some kind of saw wave. Uh, still, kind of the same sound quality goes like this. Very, very nice for this kind of hard techno industrial context to have those very aggressive and detuned vibe pad sounds, so to say, to give you the creeps. <laughs> and last but not least, some symbol right. Uh, some yeah reverse symbol right so to say easy as that um that's all i wanted to show you about this already yo what just happened i just dropped my camera while recording how is that even possible <laughs> anyways uh what's the essence of this video well if we're talking about hard techno it often comes down to having a fast track or like super hard kick drums I don't know, some type of vocal or anything, but alignment proves that hard techno is not only about that, but rather also about grooves and having a nice melodic or thematic concept for a track. So he's a really, really good producer. It was a lot of fun rebuilding his track. And as I said before, grab the project file in the description, it's for free. And there's a lot of presets, but also like um, effect racks, for example, that you can use in your productions and I would say have a good time, keep making music and see you soon.